Hello, here we go. Excellent. Oh, now that's a belter. Ah, that's me good old fizzy burger. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that didn't take a great amount of time. Oh, that was one heck of a take. Did that ever go off? Oh, it's on a mission, this one. The margins. Oh, knit one, pull two. Here we go. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Please, that one went off. It's funny how you have favourite little rigs and uh, I know, my strange sense of humour, I suppose, but that one appeals to me, <laughs> the good old fizzy burger. I can just imagine that sort of festering away on the bottom, all the little bubbles and particles coming off of uh, that tablet and, uh, and the old carp, uh, sort of their barbels pricking up and homing in on it. Excellent stuff. The only downside you get sometimes is um, with that ring in the side of the uh, the lead and a couple of tablets on there, um, I've actually had uh, fish pick up the uh, the lead <laughs> trying to eat the tablets. So just be aware of that. Make sure it's a proper take. It is a double. Uh, you can see that. See the uh, tablet still on the lead. <laughs> they haven't completely dissolved. I don't know what's left of the the bait. Just get me left. Lovely. <clears throat> Lovely scalings on it. Real old empty back jobs in here. And fast growers. You can probably see the um, the tablet's actually completely melted on the bait, more or less gone on the lead. Um, work to treat. Chunky, chunky fish. There, look, you can see virtually nothing left of that uh, uh, tablet, more or less dissolved. Now that's been out there, I guess, 25 minutes, half an hour, so it gives you an idea of the dissolve rate. And there was uh, a couple of uh, tablets on there. Uh, the one um, on the hook bait, oh, that wanted that, has uh, completely melted, although probably the last bit got washed away. The great thing is, as you can probably see from that, um, although the tablet's gone, the, the boilie, whoops, keep still, um, the boilie's come together and you've still got a very presentable rig once that uh, flavour's all dispersed out in the water and uh, attracted the carp into it. So it's good for quite a few hours. Under normal circumstances, I'd probably recast every hour or so if I wasn't getting any takes, just to make sure you're putting fresh flavour in all the time. But yeah, great. Another stunning fish. What a chunky little fish. That's great. Well, I've really enjoyed this session. Um, three beautiful fish, um, all doubles, one probably best part of 16 pound or so um, and all taken on single hook baits um, on rigs that really a lot of people don't use these days and once you come into the sort of winter and when it gets harder um, any time that you think that you don't want to put a rake of bait out there or very short sessions give it a go because both the liquids and the fizzy tablets magic well didn't Andy do well and it just shows you what a bit of thought and flavor can do for your carp fishing talking of flavour, I can still smell that very nice meal that Og's cooking over there, which I'm going to have in a second. But before we do that, I want to take you to one of the other, or three other waters actually, uh, part of the linear complex, which is the Guy Syndicate Lakes. The Guy Syndicate Lakes are made up of three waters, Gaunts, Unity and Yeomans. And we're going to pop across to Unity in a second and join Ian Poole. But before we go there, just another little thought about flavours and additives. You saw how successful Andy's method was. Do you put some thought into your own fishing when it comes to, say, using pellets, which our next angler, Ian Poole, is renowned for? In my own fishing with pellets over the years, I've certainly learned a few little tactical tips that have helped me put more carp on the bank. And one of those, which is quite simple, is to mix the sizes. Carp can get very preoccupied on one size of pellet. If you mix the sizes up, to a degree, it just confuses them. Something else that you might want to try, as Andy proved, the use of a flavour or a soak on a bait can just make it stand out that little bit more than what you're putting down as feed and perhaps draw the attention of carp to it. Another little dodge you might like to try is to actually soak some hook bait pellets. I mean if you're fishing small pellets or mixed pellets, why not put a larger pellet over the top as the hook bait? Yeah, as Andy proved in his piece, flavours, they all add to the attraction of a bait, etc, and it's well worth a try, particularly when nothing else is happening around the lake. Just be that little bit different and you never know. 
Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's go across to Unity Lake on the guys complex where Ian Paul, who is a master at pellet fishing, shows you some of his tricks and tactics. I've come down for a 24 hour session on uh, the Unity Lake on the guys syndicate complex at Linear. There's three lakes down here, um, Yeomans, Unity and Gaunt. I think Unity is considered the runs water of the three. Um, got a lot of fish in here, and probably it's most famous for the head of ghost carp. Uh, managed to catch one last night, the 24. Um, I'm going to show you how I caught it. I've had all my runs on a really sort of standard PVA bag setup. For, the, for those of you who don't know, basically a PVA bag just dissolves in water. It means you can put bait in it, cast it out, once it's out on the bottom it will dissolve and it leaves your hook bait surrounded with a patch of bait. I mean there's no better presentation really. It just, just you can cast it into weed, into silt, and you know you've got a perfect presentation every time. I use a really simple setup. Um, just 18 inches of tubing, a little flat inline lead, a hook bait in this case, it's just a couple of little multiplex cylinders. Um, this is an excellent sort of hook bait for where there's been a lot of pressure. I mean, you know, we all know how much pressure some of the waters get these days. And if they've seen a lot of PVA bags, they can get a bit funny. But fishing a hook bait like this is different from a normal round boiling. It can really get you a lot of extra takes. It's dead easy how I set it up in the bag. I mean, the, the, the PVA bag mix is just uh, some halibut pellets, um, some two mil trout pellets, and some crushed up and whole 10 mil multiplex boilers, just the frozen variety. Um, it's just, just a bit different really than just fishing just a bag with say one size pellet in where say the carp that have had a lot of pressure, have seen it all before, you know, are going to think, hang on, we've been caught on this, you know, we're not going to feed on it. But just breaking, breaking it up, putting two or three different ingredients in, sort of definitely gets you more takes. I mean the way I, the way I set my bag up is just a little bit of bait in the bottom and then with the hook bait just put it down into the bottom corner and what I do is just hook the th put the hook through and bring the point out of the bag in the corner like that the next stage is really just to fill the bag up so I'll keep the lead in the fingers on my other hand and the hook link just as long as it's not straight then it's okay it doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect the hook link can go through anyway really and then just knock it down to keep the keep everything nice and tight in the bag and then I just push the just the lead into the top of the bait and at this stage you don't want, you don't want the contents too tight in the bag else uh, you won't be able to tighten the bag up at the end just really just push it down twist the top I'll just tie it off with a bit of um, PVA tape rather than PVA string. This just dissolves easier than normal string. You just tie it off with uh, just two overhand knots. That's all you need. They won't come undone. Just, just cut off any loose bits. Just cut off the loose around the top. So it just doesn't really matter if you're sort of fishing out 20, 30 yards. But the further out you need to fish, the more little bits like this will make a difference. And it'll keep your accuracy really good. The last stage is to just just make sure the bag's nice and tight and then you can use use the corners to really get the contents nice and tight. This will help your bag sink better when you cast it out. They say the quicker it sinks, the less likely that it's going to break up on the way down rather than on the bottom. So just use a bit of spit just to stick the corners down and then we just punch a couple of holes in it just to let any remaining air in and then just use my hands really just to just to make sure it's nice and compact and firm. So really the, the further out you're fishing, the, the sort of the more 